<coughs> Good evening. I was a Rafi student, graduated at uh, 76. Um, I, I did actually the whole journey from uh, the academy to a governmental research institute to a military industry. And then uh, I entered the world of uh, startups. I counted this morning, so I founded uh, seven companies. One of them was uh, closed down, one taken public and later acquired. Three others were acquired. And uh, two, the, la the last two ones are still active. They are in a development stage. And I'm, uh, I serve as the active chairman of these uh, companies. Uh, my colleagues say too active, but that's uh, another story. <clears throat> now, a lot of these companies uh, are in the broadcast and sport technology markets. So I <clears throat> often ask myself, what's the connection between molecular dynamics that I did with Rafi and uh, sport technology? So one very simplist simplistic explanation is the uh, bobsled effect, you remember it? <laughs> I'm not sure I can still uh, explain it, but this is a potential surface of a collinear reaction, right? And in a classical representation, the, the reaction path goes this way, and when it speeds up, it climbs the wall, and this is like a, a bobsled. But this is a, a too simplistic explanation, so I, I'll give you a better one later on. I owe you. <laughs> Sorry. So I started the uh, INSUREC Nuclear Research Center. I did nothing nuclear, together with Uriah Lavi, that's another student of Rafi. We started the Atmospheric Optics Department. By the way, Uri is sending his apologies. He, co he couldn't come uh, this time. Uh, <clears throat> the atmospheric optics department became one of the main activities uh, of the center down the road. Uh, <clears throat> we developed, I think, the first or one of the first laser rad ra radars leaders in Israel. Uh, we did free optical communication. Everything was, of course, pure research, nothing else. Uh, at 84, uh, we got the E.D. Bergman Prize from Chaim Herzog. And uh, on the way back to the lowland, we decided that now we have to experience real life. And as a result of that, I found myself in Elbit. Elbit, uh, it was called Elbit Computers at the time. I became the head of uh, R&D, uh, of uh, Electro Optics Department. In, in Elbit, we did, um, what's that? Sorry. We did the first augmented reality uh, headset, one of the first uh, in the world, and that was the pilot helmet. Uh, the only difference is that compared to augmented reality headset today that cost 100 bucks, this one cost uh, maybe $200,000. <clears> we also developed uh, uh, many types of surveillance systems, night vision systems. Uh, we developed the, the, co the concept of uh, gated uh, imaging that became uh, a family of uh, night vision products still used in Elbit. Um, and we use a lot of computer vision for target detection, recognition, identification, and all our targets were, of course, peaceful and friendly. Nothing else. Um, <clears throat> after nine years, or 93, I actually started my real, real life, and that was my first uh, startup company, ORAD. I found it together with uh, Avi Sharir. I was the head of R&D. Avi was the CEO. Uh, <clears throat> down the road, Orad became a global leader in broadcast graphics. It still, it still exists, by the way, as a division in, in uh, Avid. 
one of the most well-known products is the sorry is a virtual studio in a virtual studio the talent or the real objects are um, located in a green room and the camera is moving in six degrees of freedom x y z the three angles and the, and the zoom um, and the, the green is then replaced by a three-dimensional background. But the camera should be tracked very accurately, and this motion should be conveyed in real time to the virtual camera to, to, to change the, the background accordingly. So we used um, a, a coded grid composed of two shades of green, and uh, the shooting camera captured a portion of this uh, grid, and by means of this uh, captured uh, grid, we calculated this seven degrees of freedom. Um, we also did virtual advertising in sports. Um, in this case, the, the advertising is fixed in world coordinates, while the camera, the shooting camera is moving, so it's again a problem of pattern recognition. You have to, to find uh, clues in the, in the real world uh, in order to, um, to measure very precisely the camera motion. We did the yellow line in uh, American football. Uh, I don't know how, how many of you are watching American football, but now fans in the US say that they cannot watch a game without the, the, this virtual line. It's called the yellow line, here it's uh, blue. And all this game announcement and the world record in swimming con context, the flex. Uh, actually, we started the, I think we were the pioneers of sport technology in Israel. Uh, everyone was looking at us as aliens. But uh, it changed because uh, these days I'm often invited to sports conference in Israel where there are hundreds of sport tech uh, startups. Um, so we got, we got the Emmy Award, Technical Emmy Award for the virtual studio technology. Uh, I was there 11 years and in 2004 I started the another startup company called Sportview. Sportview is doing tracking of the players and the ball in a soccer match or basketball match. Uh, it's done by means of a separate uh, array of cameras and uh, optical tracking. Uh, this company was acquired by Stats. It's the biggest uh, uh, sports statistics company in the world. And after the acquisition, um, we did a, a huge product with, uh, project with the NBA. Um, and uh, until a year ago, all NBA teams had uh, such uh, had this product, and they, and they calculated all their statistics based on this uh, uh, system. <clears throat> Following the, the acquisition, uh, we, 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 together with CNN, we developed another uh, product call, called later on the CNN hologram, where we, we have uh, co conveyed a person located in a green studio in uh, Chicago to a studio in New York as a 3D dynamic uh, image, hologram, and uh, everything was done in real time. And as you'll see in this uh, video, uh, rating-wise, it was number two after the uh, victory uh, speech of uh, Obama. Views. Uh, it was pretty amazing, I must say, in just one day after its debut, uh, and it's one of the most talked about uh, issues 
online. Let's go back to our internet reporter, Abby Tatton. Abby, what are folks around the world saying? Well, if I want to show you Google hot videos right now, after the election, obviously there's Barack Obama's acceptance speech, but then look here, the next one is called CNN Hologram First. CNN reporter Jessica Yell in the moment that she was beamed into the CDO, CNN studios just a few feet away from me last night. Hundreds of thousands of views for that video and another one that's popular She's is the Chicago moment here when artist Will I Am came in for so similar treatment pretty. later in the night. Some of the headlines on the blogs and the news... At one point you even made a quick trip for a day or so to Israel because there was some technology there you needed? Yeah, it was in between two debates. We produced, I produced the vice presidential debate. Um, went to Israel with a fellow we were working with on the project, and we were on the ground as long as we were in the air. We had to see a proof of concept being able to recreate an image that was moving with fixed cameras. These are, these are some of the cameras we used. There are, some, there are about 40 of these cameras uh, in a semicircle in, the, in this rig. We began to call it the transporter. Um, and the cameras are fixed. They don't There's move. Will I am right <clears throat> Next one was a uh, Homeland Security company, Viumi. Uh, Viumi uh, used a uh, laser-based uh, system uh, for um, protection of uh, facilities. Uh, it was used for uh, more for uh, target uh, recognition than target detection. This company was uh, later acquired by Obgal. It's a subsidiary of Elbit. <clears throat> and back to the to sports. Uh, during the hype of 3D television, um, we had the idea of conversion uh, 2D to 3D sports production uh, using scene understanding. Uh, 3D productions are about 10 times more expensive than uh, normal 2D productions. And the idea was to convert 2D to 3D on the fly, but in very high quality using, uh, using understanding of the scene, like detection of the field lines, uh, detection of the pitch limits, the goals, and so on. And the, there is... The result was a very, very uh, accurate uh, depth maps, and we got uh, a 3D representation that was very, very similar and very close to the native 3D production. Um, <clears throat> this system was purchased by everyone that uh, did uh, 3D television, like ESPN, Sky Sports, uh, the Chinese television, but you know what, what happened to 3D television? It died, so we have to, to close this uh, company. <clears throat> but the next one is much more successful, Pixelot. Uh, Pixelot is doing sport production without a man in the loop. The idea is that the computer becomes the cameraman, because what, what is the cameraman doing? Just tracking the ball, specifying a frame around the ball, and, and that's it. So the, we, we taught the computer to do it. And actually, the computer is few cameramen. There is one that, uh, that captures a white field of view. The other one captures a, a, not, uh, a narrow field of view. And the computer is also a producer, because according to the dynamics of the game, it decides which uh, cameraman goes on air. Uh, so, so you... Uh, the, the result is a sport production that looks like a $1 million production without men in the loop. Uh, Pixel has already thousands of installations around the world in, uh, in Germany, China, the, the US. Uh, <clears throat> I, again. I copied it from the website. There were more than 140 games produced last month. Uh, about a, a year and a half ago, I made a private exit from, from Pixelot in order to continue uh, to new things. So the new 
companies um, that I manage now, the one is Track 160. The idea is, again, to track players and the ball and to generate all the performance and tactical uh, parameters of the, of the players and the team. But the idea is to do it uh, fully automatic without any uh, human intervention. And this is done by means of deep learning. And by the way, deep learning changed the computer vision entirely. And the results we get uh, regarding uh, detection, recognition, segmentation, are orders of magnitude better than with just classical computer vision. So here we use uh, recognition of the player's jersey numbers. Uh, hair and skin colors. Uh, we analyze the gait, the motion, like frequency of steps, things like that. Uh, we learn, or the computer learns, the player's positions, uh, probabilities of uh, positions. And we also detect the ball in three dimensional from one viewpoint, which is also not uh, trivial. Um, as you'll see here, I can, how can I show the video? Okay, we'll leave it. Okay, just you see the, that we, we track actually each joint of the players. And this was uh, never possible before. We can do it only with the deep learning. So we actually calculate or measure the location of each joints, 18 joints per player, um, and see how accurately it's done. Um, so apart from providing a much better tracking of the player, there are many, many other uh, applications based on that. For example, uh, I can now dress the, the 3D skeleton of the players with a photorealistic model of the same player. And, and you know that now the, the models are almost like video. And then I, and it means that I've converted the game, the, the flat video, to, to 3D representation. And that means that I can now change the viewpoint. And this has a lot of uh, applications. For example, in, uh, in, in broadcast, I can change the viewpoint and provide the view from, from another location. That's the essence of replay in sport. Or I can do a virtual fly. Uh, for coaching, uh, this is a real simulator for the player. I can ins immerse the player into a play that, uh, that really happened in the last game a dynamic play, and also in gaming. Uh, now all the, all the kids that are playing uh, console games, like FIFA game, if you are familiar with, uh, and until now they, they did only virtual games, can now watch a real game on, their, on this uh, graphical infrastructure and, and uh, change the viewpoint. It means they can now fly into Ronaldo's eyes and watch the game in, in uh, real time through Ronaldo's side. This is the wet dream of uh, many sports fans. The last one, Teta V, is doing a free viewpoint video. That's a video that you can watch from any direction. It's called also volumetric video, using a proprietary depth camera that we have uh, developed and tons of deep learning and computer vision algorithms, but, but it's still in development. Back in the summer of uh, 2011, I was a little bit fed up with all the startups, and uh, I wanted a break. I called Rafi. Uh, and he told me, come to Jerusalem. I have a few ideas for you. So I went up to Jerusalem. 
I met Rafi in the same mythological room, you know, the room with the metal cabinets curating thousands of, <laughs> of uh, articles. Uh, Rafi was the same, sharp and smart as usual. The, the, the hair color changed a little bit. There was no pipe anymore, but uh, <laughs> apart from that same, and of course he used the Mac, but <laughs> apart from that, everything was like 40 years ago. And uh, let me be a bit poetic. For, for us, this room was a kind of a capsule where uh, things like uh, ideas, talks, uh, articles created a, a, a force field, or may, or may I say a potential surface, uh, separated from the world, separated from the, from the outside world. And on this potential surface, speedy bobsleds were, were coming in and out. So it was a, a, a wonderful period of uh, five months, six months. Uh, we did, uh, we tried to apply information theory to uh, biological reaction, intracellular biological reactions. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. Um, but unfortunately, um, after five months, I, uh, five, five months, I was called back to duty because one of the companies needed the funding injection. Uh, but Rafi, we still have a lot of, of time to complete the research, right? <laughs> but during this period, I had uh, the chance to, to analyze uh, what is Rafi's legacy? What did I learn from Rafi? And the first, and I formulated five commandments. The first one was think. I mean, when, whenever you have uh, spare time, when you have nothing to do, just think. Think about the, the problem, analyze it, think about the solution. Now, in the unlikely event that you do think, think big. Think big, try to change the world. Don't waste it on, on, on small, small issues. And fly away from the flock. Think differently, think out of the box. And don't be afraid to fail. I think in, in startups, there are, there are failures uh, anywhere. Uh, even if in a successful company, you need to fail. There, there is a, an unsuccessful product version or an unsatisfied customer. You need to, to push yourself, get up off the floor, and uh, invent yourself again and try another approach. Don't, afraid, don't be afraid to, to fail. The last one, be cool. Uh, I remember a situation uh, that uh, someone uh, took my idea, an idea of mine, and uh, published it without quoting me the usual stuff. Uh, I hope he's not in this room. <laughs> and uh, I was freaking out, and, my, and Rafi <coughs> told me, Mickey, calm down, relax. Nature nature will eventually judge. I don't remember it was, if it was nature or supreme nature or the cosmos, not God. <laughs> nature will eventually judge. So I, 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 I must admit that this was the most difficult commandment for me because uh, in, uh, I couldn't hold my temper every time, but in, in few uh, special events it did, did help me. And thank you very much, Rafi, for all that, and Mazaltov, Tov, Layum Uledet, and thank you all.